So, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to uh, the third weekend session for the Dublin Citizens' Assembly. And welcome to all of our Assembly members uh, here today in the Grand Hotel in uh, beautiful North County, Dublin, in Malahide. Beautiful sunny day outside. Uh, we'll get to see some of that later on. And we'd like to welcome everybody online joining us this morning um, to, to be with us for this uh, weekend session. Uh, so just before we we we, uh, we commence into the uh, to the, uh, the the agenda today, just to some things to recap on the uh, on the journey and the plan of action that we have for our citizens assembly. And if we just look at our very very high level to commence with with, with our with our plan of action, um, and before I do, if we just we always refer to our our um, our guiding. Um, our guiding document reference, which is uh, our terms of reference. And if we do our work properly together, as we have re reiterated for the last uh, number of sessions, we should be in a position to, to build a consensus um, around the recommendations uh, that we you will propose as the Assembly members. And again, our terms of reference are that, and I quote, a citizen assembly to be known as the Dublin Citizen, citizen Assembly, that's you. Will, shall be convened to consider two things. The first one is the type of directly elected mayor, and the second, the uh, type of local government structures that are best suited for Dublin, and to bring forward proposals in that regard. And the Assembly will have a total of 80 members, including an independent chairperson, that's me, 67 randomly selected members of the public uh, living, in, living in Dublin City, and county, and uh, we're honoured to have 12 councillors selected from across our four local authorities to be with us here today. Okay, so so um, as we go through uh, this session and the remaining sessions, we we um, there might not be a unanimous agreement. Nonetheless, we'll have a a consensus built on those two issues: the type of directly elected mayor and the local government structures that are best suited for Dublin. And all members, we should be able to agree that. Uh, the debate was conducted in a respectful environment uh, and that uh, you were all were given the, an equal and fair opportunity to voice your opinion and that uh, under the guidance of Dr. Jane Souter that um, the process was scrupulously, scrupulously fair and holding best principles of deliberative democracy. So if we go back to our plan of action, um, we met uh, our first session on the 30th of April, the 1st of May, that bank holiday weekend. It's a long time ago now, and a lot has been covered, but we, we spoke about what is Dublin, about the local government structures in Dublin, and the challenges that that propose at a very high level. Then we spoke on the session two, our last session, uh, on the 21st to 22nd of May. We spoke about how do we do it, uh, what others do. We had the various representatives from uh, different mayor structures um, in Europe and North America. And then we discussed the possible options, again, at a, at a very high level. What we're going to do to, over the weekend, and you have the programme and uh, the facilitators have been speaking about you this morning, and thank you again to the, to the expert advisor group um, uh, and your, uh, your steering group for uh, building the programme. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's a very exciting programme, I have to say, and, and I think you, you'll agree with me uh, when we go through the, um, through the, uh, the sessions uh, uh, later on today and tomorrow. So we're going to talk about the devolution of powers potentially for this directly elected mayor. Uh, we're going to speak about financial implications. We're going to talk about the Limerick experience, as we're all aware that they have, the citizens of Limerick City and County have, a true blabber side, have decided to have a directly elected mayor. And we're going to learn from that experience. And then we're going to speak about commerce, and we have um, uh, some chambers coming in to give their perspective on, on uh, the, the advantages or disadvantages of having a directly elected mayor. And then we're going to speak about what we have learned so far. And tomorrow, and that's a really key part of it, so tomorrow morning, our, our, our last session, we'll, we'll, um, we want to capture your thoughts. And the reason I mentioned this at the early stages to build a kind of context and look through the presentations uh, through this particular lens. So we're looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the current model of local government Dublin the potential benefits, risks, challenges, opportunities associated with a directly elected mayor for Dublin, what functions could be transferred from central government to regional or local government in Dublin, how should this be funded, and finally, the appropriate structure for local and regional government 
and councils and authorities. And again, that's all coming from our terms of reference. So if you can view the presentations this morning through those lens, it will certainly form our view of, or your view of the direction of travel of your recommendations that you'll eventually make. We still are planning to have a session on the 10th of September. It'll be in Dublin City. Um, and that'll be based really upon the, the, the um, when, we, uh, uh, when we mark your homework, I use that very ter term very usefully, but when we reflect on the session uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's session and uh, the weekend session and see how far we have come in answering those questions that, I, that I've posed in terms of what we have learned so far. So we might need to convene in September the 10th to narrow down uh, and debate the, the, the options and to agree a ballot paper that we, when we come back on the 1st of October, and that's the date definitely of the diary, we, you will commence your voting and you will agree and you will make recommendations on the type of directly elected mayor for Dublin. And then we will uh, draft a report to the assembly, uh, from the assembly members We'll send those versions out, we get comments back, and eventually, by the end of November, um, we will issue our, your report and your recommendations to the houses of the Oroctus. So that's the plan of action um, uh, for, uh, uh, for our Citizens' Assembly. Now, um, I do want to also to talk about our, um, our principles of the Assembly, and it's always, I think, important to, to emphasize um, our principles. And we have um, seven of them, and the first one is openness. And again, just to remind ourselves that this citizen Assembly will op operate in a completely transparent way, with all of our plenary meetings being streamlined um, on, uh, on www.citizensassembly.ie, and all docu documentation, including submissions, uh, will be freely available on, on the, that website. Uh, we operate with a principle of fairness, and it is important that we allow a full spe spectrum of views to be heard on every single issue. Uh, we want our briefing material to be of the highest standard, and the, uh, the presentations by selected speakers are factual, informative, impartial, and accessible. And that accessibility perspective uh, we have our, our uh, members' library, and I'd be interested to get your feedback on how that is working. Our next principle is equality of voice amongst the Assembly members. Each member will have the opportunity to voice their opinions and allow other members to voice theirs with no one dominating the discussion. And our facilitators, and you're very welcome back, you're doing a fantastic job. Uh, we had a phenomenal... Uh, um, uh, engagement with all of you in, in the last session. So I think you're, you're, we're, we're getting comfortable with each other and uh, we welcome again and encourage more debate over the weekend. Uh, respect, members will respect each other's opinions by ensuring that everyone can make contributions and express their views freely without fear from uh, personal attacks or criticism. The next um, uh, principle is efficiency. We we'll make best use of our time uh, we'll ensure that members are supported to the greatest extent possible, including presentations for meetings, and all meetings will start and end on time. And I'll do my best in that regard. Collegiality, uh, recognizing that we are a diverse group, and that diversity really is our strength. And we will work in a spirit of friendship, togetherness, as we embark this important task for Dublin City and County. And finally, that psychological safety. This is a basic human need, and a shared belief that citizens' assemblies is a safe space which welcomes diversity, allows members, uh, assembly members to flourish regardless of their gender, their color, their race, their background, or their political preferences. So those are, our, those are your um, uh, seven uh, key principles. Uh, we, we, you've held them to date, and, and let's keep working on them. Um, so before we move into the session, I would just like to... Uh, to frame our, uh, again, our, our, our vision. And um, I'm going to use some words that I, I spoke in, our, in, in the opening address um, a number of, uh, of weeks ago, a number of months ago at this stage. And uh, we spoke about um, uh, having a, uh, a, a Dublin being a great place to live, to work, to work in. Um, we wanted to build upon the vision of our founding fathers um, and to that end, we have invited in Neve Keane to uh, really set the scene for us in terms of what it means uh, to be a Dubliner, 
uh, what it means to be invited into the Sicilian Assembly, to put in context really the, um, uh, the work uh, that you're going to do and the importance of that work. And Neve is going to uh, come onto the stage um, and play a tune for us that is synonymous with Dublin. It's called the Marino Waltz. So please give a big welcome to Neve Keane. Good morning. Thank you, Neve. So just before, uh, just before Neve leaves the stage, so again, 100 years ago uh, from the creation of the state um, and the vision of our founding fathers of the city and county of Dublin, uh, we have been offered the, the opportunity to make a contribution to the future of Dublin. So we want to see the Dublin uh, of the city of the three castles uh, tower to its historic best, a landmark for excellence, inclusion, innovation, and community. We want Dublin to be a great place to live, to work, and to raise a family. So it's a great privilege that we all have uh, this weekend and over the next couple of months to, uh, to work at our collective best, delivering for the people that matter most, those people in the background, the 1.4 million people and citizens that proudly call Dublin their home. So once again, give Neve a great Thanks, Neve.